Welcome to Book Talk. I'm Paige Counts, Public Information Officer with Caldwell County, and joining me is Emily Gibbons to share her favorite books. Yeah, favorite books today. All right, Emily, what do you have for us? So when I was putting together a list, I've had a theme, and I thought I could so stick with a theme. We've got March, we've got spring, we've got, you know, summer reading is coming. But I think one of the things we haven't really talked about yet is just my favorite books, the books that have stood out to me over the past few years. Um, some are, like, high-key favorites. Some are low-key favorites. That's just the, the teenager talk. Mm -hmm. um, there's some that I'm going to admit here today that you might be like, what? But then, I mean, you know, we all have our smart favorite books and then our maybe not so literary favorite books. Um, so I got a little bit of both of those today. All right, tell me what your first one is. So my first, if you ask me, just ask me on the sidewalk what my favorite book is, I'm always gonna say the same answer. Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. Um, I just loved it. I've read it in every format. I've listened to it, I've read it, I have watched the movie. And I wasn't mad about it. Um, a lot of people are mad about movies. We can talk about that too. Um, I'm not one of those people. So this is about Lou, who lives a perfectly ordinary life. She lives with her family, including her grandpa, um, her sister, her sister's kid, um, just you know, this big ex family in a small home kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And she loses her job, and she decides on a whim to apply to be the caregiver for a quadriplegic. Um, however. He's a little bit more than she bargained for. He's super bossy. His name's Will. I really liked him. Super bossy, moody, um, and he has plans that Lou is not on board for. And um, she decides that she is going to teach him that he can have a good quality, her idea of a good quality life. And the twist is she learns how to live a good life. Um, anyway, it's just, it's one of my favorites. It's sad, and it's lovely, and it's thoughtful, and... Um, it'll just, I, I don't know, it's just one I could talk about all day. I've read it, I was, yeah, like I said, three times and not even mad about the movie. And one thing I've noticed is you like to feel a range of emotions Yeah. when you read. You're not one that always wants a happy ending. You'll take the sad ending I or will. the suspenseful ending. So I, I have this a little bit of a... Um, I don't know. My husband says it's a little dark, but like A Painted Veil. That's mm -hmm. one of my favorite books not on this list. Um, Cold Mountain. That's one of my favorite books not on this list. And then this book, too. It, it, that's, if you've been under a rock, you might not know what happens in this book. Um, but there's something about when the character dies at the end. And you're like, whoa, but wait a minute. But in the meantime, there's a really lovely story there. In Cold Mountain, he said, I'll come home to you. And he did. Um, that's beautiful to me. That's absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, I don't, I, I can see the beauty in those, in those types of emotions, I guess. Um, I like books that make me think and make me feel. So yeah. Um, I don't, I'm not an overly, I'm a dramatic, but not overly emotional as right. a person. So, um, yeah, fill in those things in books is easier for me than showing those things on the outside, I think. So what book do you have next? The Martian by Andy Weir. Um, this is a surprising favorite for me. I've read it a couple of times, too, and listened to it, a movie. I wasn't mad about it. I'm rarely mad about movies, so um, I accept their movies and move mm -hmm. on. Um, Mark Watney is one of the first people to walk on Mars, and now he's pretty sure he'll be the first to die. So there is a massive sandstorm, and he is stranded, abandoned, fall injured, dead, and his team leaves him. Um, and so this book is about his survival. He's a botanist on Mars. Um, then his, then you've got the whole side of NASA trying mm -hmm. to save him and again if you've been under a rock you might not know what happens but I thought it was a funny book I thought it was really funny um, I've given this to some teenagers it's a good crossover type book where you can like um, I'd say like 15 and up would mm -hmm. love this book um, it's so it's funny Edge of your seat, good time. That's just, you know, because you are you just are really rooting for these people, even though it's maybe improbable. And it is completely heavy on the science. Um, I don't even know if the science is true or right. Don't know. Didn't care. Um, 
good story. It doesn't matter. Yeah, if the just a history. good story. I yeah, I'm not and I'm not reading it for the science. Somebody else might be like, they can not grow potatoes on Mars. But you know what? He lived on those potatoes. Awesome. I don't know if it's real or not. You know, this is just use your imagination. Yeah, I'm perfectly fine to take it for what it says. Um, Mark Watney was an industrious guy, and it, he made it. He made a good. He made a good character. Um, I really rooted for him. So yeah, that was a fun one. Great. And you, I mean, you have a whole list here, so I'm just going oh, to move just, into your next one. I, okay, so the next one is, um, I have to say, it, should, it comes with some trigger warnings. It's got some child abuse, suicide, mental health, stalking. It's a heavy read. But those books that stay with you later, the ones where I can actually remember details, mm -hmm. that's how I know it was a favorite because I read so much that they just you know, they'll kind of, oh, I think I read that one. Anyway, this is The Push about Ashley Audrain. And this is a relatively new book, maybe in the past couple of years. I had to wait on this book on the digital library for a little bit, but man, was it worth it. Um, this is a story about a mother. She's becoming a mother. And when she first holds her daughter, Violet, she's like, this kid's different. This is not what I was looking for. I don't feel a connection. Um, and she really struggles in that initial, and, and continues to struggle with the connection with her daughter. Um, but then a little later, the second child is born and there it is. She has what she's dreamed of, this beautiful connection with her son. Um, she even thinks that Violet, the daughter, is um, warming up to him and that they're, they're a happy family for a blissful little moment. And then there's a tragic accident and the son dies, and mom, her name's Blythe, um, she thinks she saw something happen involving Violet, that maybe she's responsible for this accident, but she can't be sure. And then she's got this, you also have somebody, you know, her husband's in the background going, this is all in your head, you're reading too much into these situations. Um, but then you've also got that mother instinct of, is my child a monster? Mm -hmm. And then, but then, the world is telling her maybe she's the monster for feeling these things about her child. Um, so anyway, it's a page turner. Um, I, I listened to it and I started it and I think, I mean, I finished it the same day. Wow. I just listened and listened and listened. And I went to my room after five, like when I got home and I listened some more, like leave me alone. I'm finishing this book. Um, yeah, it's really, it's a good one. And I don't know anybody that's read it that hasn't enjoyed it. It's not enjoyable. Let's don't, it's not enjoyable. It is dark and moody, um, twisty and tragic and sad. Maybe read it when you're in a good headspace. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you're looking for a pick me up, that's not the that's book. That's not it. Um, but sometimes it's good to be challenged and to think about these things. For sure, for sure, yeah. And that was definitely when, I mean like it leaned, it might, it's a slow burn into the psychological thriller, but then for me, it also kind of took a turn for horror um, a little bit. This idea, of, I don't know, scary children. That you know, yeah, you, that's that's very disturbing. Yeah. So yeah, it took a, it did. It took a turn into horror for me. Um, but yeah, I've I've recommended it to a lot of folks. I think it's a good one. Okay, is this next book scary? No, this or next happy? book is happy, kind of. It's a juvenile fiction book. It's Crenshaw by Catherine Applegate. Um, and most people are familiar with her. She wrote The One and Only Ivan, mm -hmm. um, which was a movie a few years back. And it's really fun. I read those two. And I think there's The One and Only Bob or Bob's the Dog. I read that one too. Um, she has a really interesting perspective um, with relating emotions to animals, I don't know. And the, you know, then that relates to children. Mm -hmm. Children can understand that. So this book is about a boy named Jackson. I wanna say he's maybe fifth grade, sixth grade, somewhere in there, and his family's having a really hard time. His dad has multiple sclerosis. Um, I don't remember what his mom does, but they find themselves having to live out of their van again. And this isn't the first time. Um, so, and he's really struggling. It's his mom, his dad, his sister, and a smelly dog. Um, and taking the dog with them is a real, that's a decision they really had to make. And I guess I hadn't thought about that before, that you might have to give up your pets if you're struggling. Um, but they decide the dog is worth it. I was glad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, a very large and talkative cat named Crenshaw is also on this journey. Um, 
he likes to eat purple jelly beans and sometimes they get in trouble, but the thing is, is he's not real. He's Jackson's imaginary friend. So as Jackson um, kind of evolves in the story, sees more about the actual, you know, it's not just that, oh, they can't afford rent. There's reason, like as he starts to learn his parents, I guess their troubles and starts to see more their side of things, like this is not happening. It's happening to all of them, not mm -hmm. just to him. It's not on purpose, I guess, is what right. I'm trying to say. Crenshaw starts to kind of fade. And it's a really lovely story of friendship and how important friendship is, regardless of where you find it. Um, even if it's imaginary, this cat was there for him in unimaginable ways. And as a parent, I was really... Um, I, I think Crenshaw provided maybe what his parents couldn't mm -hmm. in that moment. Um, so yeah, the hardships were real, um, but the love in the family really was too. So I think it's a quick, feel-good read. It's a great book for a road trip. Like if you want to listen with your kids, it's a nice, safe, easy listen. Um, and I'd recommend the other two as well, um, The One and Only Ivan and, and the book about Bob. Um, if you read Bob, it's voiced by Danny DeVito, and it's incredible. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, he's the perfect Bob. So nice, easy road trip. Spring break's coming up. It is. So yeah. It's something that's safe for the kids to listen to. A good family activity, too. Um, we've done some of that as a family. My husband's not always on board with those, but if I find the right one. News of the world. Yes, we listened to that, and it was a winner. Um, news of the world. He, he enjoyed that, and my kiddo did, too. Um, yeah. I'm all for these family listens great way to connect kids that may push back on reading yeah to books absolutely um and two it does count you are reading a book if you're listening to a book that is that absolutely plays into the comprehension side of things um my daughter will catch details every time that i don't catch um which is you know that makes good conversation too we listen to the hunger games my daughter and i um she might she was little i mean like fourth grade but the thing about it is maybe it was a little young but you know too they gave us some great conversation um and you can talk about important topics without them really being about the important topics yes that you know they're not relating to her they're relating to the characters um so yeah i'm always for a good family read um and then my next book is a little different too. It's called The Dearly Beloved by Kara Wall. And I don't usually lean towards books that are religious mm -hmm. or inspirational, but this book was recommended to me and I try to read those because, I mean, I, I recommend books to people. So, you know, why, why wouldn't I? Um, so it follows two ministers and they share a church. Um, this follows their friendship, their families, and their faith. Um, they are ministers in New York City. Um, you think that they're all going to be fast friends, you know, here they're mm -hmm. leading this church together, but that's not the case. The wives don't really get along at all, or then they're not really friends. But the two ministers come together, and it's interesting because they come from different backgrounds. You've got James, who is educated, and he falls in love with a lady named Lily, who's not even sure she believes in God. And yet, there she is, a pastor's wife. Um, and then you've got Charles, who's from a hard knock background. He meets Nan in college, and she is a dutiful minister's daughter and a debutante. Um, he's from, like, Chicago. He's lived hard. Um, so, I don't know. It just surprised me. I really cared for these characters. I found their journeys. It, this I want to say it spans maybe 50 years. Um, just how they struggle with the, within themselves with their faith mm -hmm. and how um, faith kind of ebbs and flows was very relatable for me. Um, some people have a really easy time. They can just have faith in the unseen. Absolutely, this is real. This is how it is. Um, and then other people need a little bit of evidence to believe. And I really liked seeing it from a minister type point of view to make it feel like, oh, those feelings are okay. You know, that really is legitimate. Your feelings are real. Um, I, I just, I, I really loved it. And the, these characters are all looking for meaning in their lives. Um, and they found them through service, you know, a service to the congregation, a service um, through what I mean, Nan was never able to have children, and she was really sad about that. Let's, you know, and it's relatable. Um, she would have been the perfect mom 
and yet it didn't work out for her that way. So anyway, I just, I thought it was a really beautiful, beautifully written, probably the most literary on my list, um, but well worth the time. And books that are relatable, I think we connect with those. Yeah. And books that validate what we're feeling. Oh, for sure. That, you know, that's a good read. Yeah, this, this was, this was, yeah, it, it took me by surprise. I like those books too, the ones mm -hmm. that I don't, didn't really plan to read, but then it's like, oh, I really like that book. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I really cared for these guys, and I thought their friendship over the years, even in all of their differences, I just thought it was so lovely. So yeah, that's a good read. A little bit quieter, a little bit slower. Um, But your list so far, you have more, has been quite diverse. Yeah, I read all over the place. Um, one thing you won't, I'm not qualified to talk about nonfiction. I don't read it. Um, <laughs> I don't live in that reality. So <laughs> it's all, it, yeah, I'm a fiction reader. So I like the escape. I like the use of my imagination. Me too. Me too. Um, I also like, I'll pick up a book when I first hear it's becoming a movie. I'm like, I'm going to read it. Mm -hmm. And then enough time has passed. That's why I can't be mad about the movie. I don't remember any of the details. <laughs> um, but I, I'm, I'll get on board with favorites, you know, that are making the news or whatever and read those too. Um, and some of those are, that's, you know, that's what they were. Me Before You and The Martian, that's, yeah. I, I'll totally read what's popular, but then I enjoy finding those little hidden gems too. And that's what The Dearly Beloved was. That was a little hidden gem that came out really quietly, not a big deal. And then it's just, it really surprised me. Um, didn't get all the, you know, having been in that whole library world, there's books that get a lot of talk and books mm -hmm. that don't. And I never even, that one came out and I never even noticed. So yeah, it's a good one. Then we've got The Last Mrs. Parrish by Liv Constantine, which is a doozy. Um, <laughs> dark and twisty and juicy. Um, this might be another good one to read when you're in a good headspace. So Amber is tired of being nobody and she immerses herself in Daphne Parrish's life. Daphne is pretty perfect, wealthy, philanthropist, seems to have a fairy tale life with her real estate broker husband. Um, Amber even like, she starts to look like her, gets a job in her husband's office, um, just becomes Daphne's best friend. The next thing you know, the kids love her. She is going to be the next Mrs. Parrish. But the question is, is she going to be the last? Um, as she insinuates herself in to her life, she's taken advantage of Daphne's compassion and Daphne starts to figure it out. And anyway, it, it takes some turns that I did not see coming. Um, so it's a little bit, yeah, twisty and fun. Um, it's one I recommend to a lot of psychological thriller readers. Um, I haven't read any other Liv Constantine books, or if I have, it hasn't stood out to me, but that one really did. A lot of twists, lots of turns. Yeah. So a page turner. Oh yeah, yeah, a real page turner, read it quick. Um, and the next one's a page turner too, and it's actually really short, um, like 240 pages. You can read this in a sitting, you can. Um, <laughs> so yeah, 240 pages. It's called Behind Closed Doors by B.A. Paris. This one made the rounds um, at the library. One person read it, and the next thing I knew we all had. It was one of those that just, we had to have our hands on it. Um, on the outside, Jack and Grace are the perfect couple. Um, he is an attorney that defends battered women. And she is a homemaker that throws marvelous dinner parties. Um, and the, you know, the perfect doting wife. But behind closed doors, Jack's got a dark side and he keeps Grace locked away as a prisoner. Um, so he pretty much woos her and then gets him to gets her to marry him and then on their honeymoon to Thailand finds out exactly what kind of person he is. Yeah. Um, so anyway, when Grace's sister suddenly, who, who is special needs, has to move in with them, that triggers Grace to, she's got to find a way out. Um, and so, yeah, it, she becomes determined to save herself. It's a tense, quick paced read um, and it stayed with me stayed with me long after I read it. Like now I'm thinking I might want to read it again. Maybe I don't remember all the details. That one sounds like a lot of, I don't want to say fun to read, but a good book to read. Yeah, it is I good. Mean, it just has 
the right twists, the right turns. Well, and it's hard to say a book is enjoyable or fun when it's about such heavy subject right. matter, but it's also fiction. It is not real. Um, and that that's makes it easy in my head to separate because if it was real, I couldn't do it. Right. That's why right. I don't read nonfiction. Um, I guess that could be nonfiction. I don't know, but I don't want to think about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to think about it. Um, my, my head is a happier place. So my next one is Brooklyn by Colm, I want to say Tobin, but it's an Irish name, and it's T-O-B-I-E-N. He's written quite a few books, and I've read most of them. Um, this was also a very beautiful movie that I wasn't mad about. Um, Ellis has grown up in post-World War II small town Ireland. Um, an Irish priest offers to sponsor her to move to Brooklyn and start a new life in an area that he promises will be a lot like Ireland. She'll still be surrounded by comfort the you know you've got okay. the you know you've got the the Italians live over here and the Irish live over here and New York City still very much like mm -hmm. that um, so yeah she's gonna go she decides she has to do it um, but she's leaving her mother and her sister behind well while she's in Brooklyn she lives in like a boarding house she starts to make friends she starts to develop a relationship with a cute Italian boy. Um, and she's really starting to immerse herself in this new life and become somebody. She even moves up the ranks at work. And um, even, you know, just she's really enjoying herself there. But then there is a tragedy, and she needs to return to Ireland. Um, her sister has passed away. And so she goes home to spend some time with her mom and to grieve. And while she's there, she keeps her marriage a secret. Um, she doesn't. She doesn't share that she has gotten married before leaving, and um, it kind of complicates things because there's a new another love interest in Ireland, which you know, whatever you think, um, <laughs> it, it, whatever for me. What all of that meant was it was a story about defining home. Mm -hmm. um, is home a person or is home a place? Was she just drawn to this other guy because he was in Ireland near her family? Or, um, I don't know. I just couldn't really be mad at her. Um, and I found that that was surprising to me that I couldn't be mad at her. But I really loved Ellis. And I, I felt for her struggle. Um, I found the the book to be very atmospheric and very haunting and um, just a lovely not I can't it's not feel good it has mm -hmm. a good ending but Ellis figures out who she is and what's important to her and what she needs to do with her life and I would love to find out where Ellis is like yeah I'd like, yeah. I'd like to catch up with Ellis um, the movie is very beautiful too because it takes place in that lovely time where women wore those beautiful dresses and mm -hmm. guys love their baseball. It's very, um, I don't know, it all seems very, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a little more like simpler times. Right. Maybe. I don't know. I loved it. Yeah. Those, these are the books I would, I, like if you ask me on the street, I would probably and ask you what you want to what what kind of book do you like to read I might tailor my choice but um, those are my like high key the ones that I will admit to really enjoying yeah because we all have some that we'll never tell anybody that we read yeah but yeah. we enjoyed them yeah and and then there's you've got the answers to like oh I love Jane Austen yeah do you <laughs> she <laughs> is hard to read she is hard to read and I have to admit like Pride and Prejudice I read it. It was difficult. I was glad I had those little footnotes. Um, Sense and Sensibility, I enjoyed it more. Um, and that's not that's not the usual answer. So right. that's, yeah. You know, so some things are surprising. Um, I will say that a book that surprised me that I read, these are, again, my low-key favorites. Um, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. That started a fascination with me on these gothic um dark, broody houses where the house is a character. That happens a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of led me down this path where I read Jane Eyre, I read Rebecca, um, and a couple of others. There's even some newer fiction where the house is a little bit of a horror story. So yeah, that that one, I surprisingly, I really loved that classic. Like it was not a chore to read. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good one. 
Emily, thank you for being here and thank you for sharing your favorite books with us. Sure thing. And I look forward to having you back soon. Uh, yeah, great. Thanks. And thank you for watching Book Talk. Thank you.